Hey everyone, it's me, Jack the Dripper. Uh, today I'm doing a bit of a different video. Instead of gameplay, I'm doing a history video on the context of Neo 2. Uh, many people play this game and don't understand what's going on. I was one of those people, but I decided to look into it to answer that question for all the people like me. So let's just get right into it. Alright, so as most of you probably know, Neo 2 takes place during the Sengoku era of Japanese history, also known as the Warring States period. During this time, many warlords, known as Daimyo, were fighting over the control of the entire country. This period of time lasted for about 150 years, starting in the mid to late 1400s and ending in the early 1600s. Going into the war, the country was controlled by the Ashikaga Shogunate. Uh, Shogunate is basically just a military dictatorship. Um, there's an emperor too, but he doesn't really do much, so he's not that important. Yeah. Anyway, at the time, the capital of the country was located in Heankyo, which is modern day Kyoto. During this period, there were three supremely influential individuals known as the Great Unifiers. The first was Oda Nobunaga, the second was Toyotomi Hideyoshi, and the third was Tokugawa Ieyasu. Now, if you played the first game, you know what happens at the end of the war, from about 1600 to 1615. But this game takes place about 50 years earlier, and focuses on the first and second great unifiers instead of the third. Alright, let's talk about the first of the three great unifiers, Oda Nobunaga. Now chances are, if you've watched any samurai movie, or listened to anything, or played anything relating to the Sengoku era, you've heard about this guy. He's like the Japanese Julius Caesar. Hell, just like Caesar, he happened to be a brilliant military tactician paved the way to a new era for his country, and unfortunately was betrayed and assassinated by his own close subordinates. From where did a legendary lad like this originate? Humble beginnings, I guess. Except not. He was born in 1534 as the son of a daimyo, Oda Nobuhide, so he already had elevated status and was trained from a young age in the art of warlording. His father was already reasonably successful and controlled a portion of the Owari province. When his father died, young Nobunaga was already lifting cars and saving people from burning buildings. I'm just kidding. But he did take control of the entire province, though. He is relatively unknown to the rest of the country until a little quarrel with an established daimyo from a neighboring province named Imagawa Yoshimoto. You see, Yoshimoto had a massive army at his disposal and was on his way to Kyoto to instate his own shogun. Nobunaga, on the other hand, had a much smaller force in comparison. But using his massive brain and also guns, he defeated Yoshimoto and shocked the entire country, putting him on the map. And this is a good time to bring up that Nobunaga was vehemently anti-traditionalist, which is a large factor in why he was the first daimyo to utilize firearms. Now when you have a war machine, you need fuel, and in a war, money is fuel. Nobunaga decided, screw it, we're gonna be a farmy army, and took control of the Owari Plain, which provided vast economic support for his growing domain through agriculture. In 1562, Nobunaga formed an alliance with none other than the third great unifier himself, Tokugawa Ieyasu. He also allied with a cool dude named Takedo Shingen, but that's not important. As Nobunaga's prominence continued growing, he started getting bored. So one day he had a crazy idea. Everyone else is trying to appoint their own shogun, but they're all monkeys. What if I just slid into Kyoto and appointed my own shogun? So he did. He marched into Kyoto and appointed this dude named Ashikaga Yoshiaki to the position of shogun, to be used as a puppet to control the country. If the name Ashikaga sounds familiar, it is. He was the younger brother of the former shogun, Ashikaga Yoshiteru, who had been assassinated a few years prior. So this guy is just chilling, doing shogun things, until Nobunaga changed his mind and kicked him out of the capital. And this was effectively the end of the Ashikaga shogunate, even though it technically lasted until Yoshiaki's death. Yoshiaki said, what the hell dude, and left to become a Buddhist monk, which as you will come to learn, Nobunaga hates. Around the same time, Nobunaga built a fancy castle in Izuchi on the bank of Lake Biwa, which is nearby to Kyoto. At this point, Nobunaga is trying to politically unify the whole country by force, and one of the first steps he takes is nerfing Daimyo. Patch notes for update 15.70. Daimyo 2 OP. Too much money to wage wars. Fix. Daimyo no longer receive road and guild tolls. Less money meant less opposition to Nobunaga. However, he also needed to get rid of the only traditional power that could stand against his rule, Buddhism. Now if you remember, Nobunaga hates tradition. If he came into contact with it, he'd probably spontaneously combust it or something. See, 
Is that traditionalism I smell? Get it away from me. Ah! Ah! I'm melting. Please save me. I'm melting. So Nobunaga went over to Mount Hiei, where the HQ of the Tendai sect of Buddhism was located, and started blasting Limp Biscuit while leveling all the temples and monasteries in sight. While this purge was happening, many members of the radical eco sect of Buddhism started stockpiling weapons and formed small armies in preparation for Nobunaga's eventual arrival. They desperately needed backing from Daimyo if they wanted to hold their own against Nobunaga though. Remember Yoshiaki? The guy who was shogun for a bit and became a Buddhist monk after being kicked out of the capital by Nobunaga? While the Ikko allied with him, this allowed them to spread their influence on a much greater scale. They started picking up more powerful Daimyo to back them up left and right, and soon their force was enough to rival Nobunaga. They fought for ten whole years until the imperial court eventually intervened and forced the Ikko to surrender. The defeat was a massive blow to Buddhist political influence, and on top of that, Nobunaga decided to be quite the charitable lad and give all the former properties of the Ikko to samurai and wealthy farmers, which secured him the political and financial support of many new individuals. Also, as a last laugh against the Buddhists, he started protecting Christian missionaries, partially out of his own fascination with the West, mostly because it harmed Buddhist influence. But on a neat side note, Nobunaga's son at one point was trying to conquer the Iga province, right? But he just can't do it. If you've ever heard of the Iga province, you probably think of ninjas, well, because that's what they're known for. Anyway, so he can't, he can't take over this province. So Nobunaga comes in, he's like, let me show you how it's done, son. And then, uh, attacks from six directions. Now that would be a battle I would love to witness. The ninja's last stand while surrounded from all sides. Also, another neat side note. Nobunage had a retainer uh, who was the first non-Japanese samurai. It was this African man who was known as Yasuke. Just a cool thing. Anyway, back to Nobunage. So after absolutely decimating Buddha's influence and securing essentially unrivaled power, which he needed to unify the nation, all he needed to do was conquer West Japan. That's when one of his retainers, Akechi Mitsuhide, pulls a Brutus and betrays him while he rests at the Hanuji Temple. Nobunaga is wounded in the initial attack and is forced to commit seppuku, or ritual suicide. To find out what happens next, we must look at the second great unifier, Toyotomi Hideyoshi. In Neo 2, Toyotomi Hideyoshi is depicted quite strangely. He's like two guys, but one of them is mute. They like, shared the same name, which is like a compound of the character on one of their like daggers and the other dude's name. Point is that the depiction in the game takes quite a few liberties in terms of accuracy to Hideyoshi's character. At least Nobunaga is pretty accurately portrayed, aside from the fact that he has a stand. Anyway, in the game, many of the fictionalized parts stem from the fact that Hideyoshi is two lads. Also, they're a yokai too. So Hideyoshi, like Nobunaga, had humble beginnings that weren't actually humble, except that this time they actually were. He was born as the son of a peasant who was completely illiterate for the entirety of his early life. Like Nobunaga, he also grew up in the Awari province. He joined Nobunaga's ranks as a foot soldier, but was eventually promoted to samurai because he was such a chad. Now that he was a samurai, he could basically do whatever he wanted to, and defeated two powerful daimyo in the Omi province and earned the title Lord of Shikuzen. At this point, Nobunaga was starting to realize what a great leader Hideyoshi was, and sent him off to go conquer West Japan while he himself was fighting with the Ikko. He relentlessly sieged this daimyo named Mori Terumoto, who had been holding off his advance. But quite unexpectedly, Nobunaga got Ed to Mitsuhide, so Hideyoshi had to call a timeout with Terumoto and rush back to hunt down Mitsuhide. Mitsuhide didn't make it far, and was defeated by Hideyoshi at the Battle of Yamazaki where he committed Sudoku. Because of Nobunaga's death, his retainers gathered to discuss who would succeed him as head of the Oda clan. Hideyoshi ardently supported Nobunaga's grandson, while many others disagreed. Hideyoshi said, wait, you can't disagree with me, I avenge Nobunaga. But they proceeded to disagree. Hideyoshi, not giving two and a half Shinto priests, defeated one disagreeer, Shibata Katsuye, yeah that guy in a battle and made him commit Suzaku in order to intimidate all the other disagreeers. And while he was at it, he went and conquered a bunch of fortresses and strongholds as well. 
He also built his own fortress at the site where the Ikko HQ used to be in Osaka, which would be where the last stand of the Toyotomi loyalists happened in 1615, which was like, uh, where the second and third DLCs of the first game happened. Anyway, Hideyoshi continued conquering stuff to complete Nobunaga's dream of a united Japan, and even gained the Emperor's favor at one point. Remember Mori Teramoto, the guy who Hideyoshi called a timeout with so he could avenge Nobunaga? Well, Teramoto was thinking, this timeout has been going on for quite a while, I'm bored, and started to throw a tantrum by attacking Hideyoshi's territories. Hideyoshi promptly called a time in and uh, put a stop to that real quick. By this time, the lad Ieyasu realized he couldn't really stand against Hideyoshi, so he joined his ranks and helped him conquer the rest of the country, finally unifying it under a government composed of daimyo that were allied with Hideyoshi. After unification, Hideyoshi imposed the famous sword ban, which prevented non-samurai from carrying swords, and the less famous castle purge, which demolished unnecessary fortresses in order to keep the country more peaceful. Also, he divided the non-elites into arbitrary RPG classes based on their occupations to promote organization and order. Now there's something I forgot to mention about Nobunaga, mostly because it wasn't really relevant until now, but he had a dream that was after Japan was unified, he would invade China to prove that they were no longer China's plaything. Hideyoshi, now that the country was stable, decided he wanted to fulfill this dream as well as go even bigger and conquer the entirety of East Asia, including India, Korea, and the Philippines. So Hideyoshi left his nephew, Hidetsugu, in charge of the government while he left to invade Korea, which was the first step on the road to China. Hideyoshi used invasion. It's not very effective. You see, while Japan was an advanced military type, Korea happened to be an allied with China type. So Hideyoshi then waited a bit, and used invasion again. Once again, it's not very effective. Unfortunately for Hideyoshi, Korea was still an allied with China type, and repelled the second invasion as easily as the first. And even more unfortunate for Hideyoshi, he died with the taste of defeat still fresh in his mouth. His son was only five at the time of his death, so on his deathbed, he appointed some of his most trusted allies to run the country and raise his son in his absence. It was known as the Council of the Five Elders, which sounds super fantasy. Among the council was the lad Ieyasu, who said, screw this, I'm not going to be a babysitter, and took control of the government. And with that, we have made it to where the first game begins, with Ieyasu fighting the Toyotomi loyalists led by Yoshida Mitsunari. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm welcome to any feedback or suggestions for future topics uh, to cover in the comments. Doesn't even have to be about a game. It could be anything in history. It doesn't even have to be history for that matter. It could be anything. Yeah.